What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm here with a man who needs no introduction, Ricky Gutierrez. He has easily the largest stock market channel on YouTube, uh, the largest Facebook group as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's invited me here to do a quick house tour. We're doing a couple videos together. So we're gonna show you guys his, uh, his pad here. And we are obviously starting out here on the trampoline. So yeah, do uh, a front flip test. <laughs> it's called flip check. I don't think I can do the front flip. It's been like I 10 know. years. I'll do it. I'll Ready? let you do one though. Let's see one. All right, now, now we're out. ready to, sh to show the house. All right, All right so this is the backyard. Um, I bought the house a little bit over, I want to say two months. Um, put a trampoline next to the pool. Not the safest thing, but... <laughs> Was there a purpose behind that so you could jump into the pool? Yeah, when I bought the house, I already told the guys that I wanted to buy a trampoline just so we could put it next to the pool and do some flips into it. So uh, I know it's not the safest, but it's pretty cool. Um, we got a really nice pool. There's fountains and lights. Uh, the pool lights up like green, blue, red. All this crazy stuff um, in the middle of the night. The jacuzzi lights up. We're still getting it furnished. Uh, and obviously, you know, we come on over here and shoot your shot 2019. Um, but uh, yeah, this is pretty much the Very outside. Cool. Well, let's check out the inside. Let's do it. Alrighty. Yeah, this is where Harley cooks. Uh, he's one of our roommates. This is where we're always mainly working, kind of like the living room area. We have an office, we have multiple offices, yet we all just always just work. It's just so relaxing. Over here, this is my YouTube room. So this is where all the magic happens. We got the lights, we got the background, we got the um, adjustable desk. Uh, we have the green screen behind Michael right now. We're still setting up the whiteboard over here. Um, very simple, I think, setup uh, with the lights, uh, you know, two monitors, my laptop. And the really cool thing that I try to focus on um, on my channel is that I'm not here to like, um, and this is a Maserati, right? So I don't like showcase the Maserati and say like, I just bought a Maserati and flex it on Instagram right, or social yeah. media and look how much money I have. Not at all. I The way that I showcased this on YouTube when I first bought it was I bought the cheapest Maserati in my area, $30,000. 2014 Maserati Ghibli. Q4S, right? Very simple. Yeah, this is a 2016 Black Edition, lowest price uh, GTR in the country for the Black Edition um, and the year that, it, that it's at. So I really like the red one. I've never had a red one before. This is my fourth GTR. And then I have the silver one that's out here. It's a 2015 Stage 2 Silver GTR. Um, that one's probably one of my favorite ones to drive. And then I have my 2016 McLaren 570s. And for people that love to say that it's rented, I'm like, yes, I rent it 365 days out of the year. <laughs> so um, again, expensive rental. <laughs> expensive, right? So um, one of the things that we focus on is, again, just trying to understand. So like, let's say a Camaro. I try to understand what this car is worth within my area. There's so many people that have this car for sale. Okay. I make a bunch of offers below the lowest price in the area and I build myself that margin. It's making sure that you make all your profit when you buy the car. Right. So you get to enjoy it, you have that peace in mind. If something happens or if something goes wrong with the car, then guess what? That's why you built that margin. So you don't obviously just go out and impulse buy exotic cars. There's a lot of thought and planning that goes into this, right? There's not one car that you see here that I bought because I wanted it. I've made about 25, I had an offer, so that one was under a pending sale and I didn't accept it. They offered me, I think it was like 66 or 67,000 and I told them like 67,500. Again, I was, I really enjoy driving it so much. That yeah, so you didn't they, need to sell it. Yeah. yeah, if they want to offer me that, uh, the price that I'm asking for, great. If not, then guess what? I get a lot of smiles per gallon on the GTR, so. <laughs> it's I'm a good all, way to look at it. I'm all for it. Now, which one of these is your daily driver or do you switch around? Um, well, that, that's my roommate's Justin. Uh, this is my roommate's um, Harley. He actually has a flip in that garage. That's a Maserati Quattroporte. He bought it for like $9,000. Uh, but the one that I, enjoy, my daily driver would be like one of these two GTRs. And then the one that I enjoy driving the most would be obviously the McLaren.
All right, Ricky, so one of the first things I want to have you like talk about, I cheated, I watched your other videos talking about how you became a millionaire. Yeah. Um, so but I think it was really interesting for me hearing about your upbringing and where this all started for you because I think a lot of people assume they see somebody with a bunch of sports cars, they think, oh, maybe like there was some family money involved. Yeah. And from what I can tell, that was not the case at all with you, right? Correct. Yeah. So how did you get started? What was your upbringing like? I know you said that your dad was a tile worker. Yeah, so my dad lays down tiles. Of right now, that's still like essentially kind of what he does. But uh, he's like 63, 64 years old. Um, so uh, I, I grew up in a. Uh, both of my parents are from Mexico. Sure. And I grew up in a very like traditional Hispanic family. With um, I, I I loved my upbringing. Like it was never like made very like. I, I feel like we were raised like pretty well. Um, it wasn't until like the market crashed in 2008 that obviously because of all the work that like my dad does have to do with like, you know, well, on homes, yeah. um, he wasn't uh, at a point where after the market crashed, he had no business. Yeah, there's, there's no more work after that and it really like put a huge toll in not only the relationship um, and the environment like at our house, but I really started to see my parents struggle, not just financially, but like in their relationship. And that was just something that I told myself that like, I never want to like be in that position because I knew how much like my parents loved one another. And to see how money can have an influence on a relationship was just so like mind boggling to sure. me. I had this like fingerboard company where it was like a little skateboard. Like uh, the tech decks, right? The little tech yeah. decks, yeah. So I made those, I started a company. I grew like up to 3,000 followers on YouTube. Um, and I originally came up with the idea with my friends, but then it grew to me doing it myself. And that was like how I started kind of like my first actual business. I was always reselling things like on the side, like sure. iPhones and um, I would buy Gatorades from like Costco and then sell them at sell like- Sell them at school. <laughs> yeah, and, and at like lots and stuff like that. And the thing was like, it wasn't until I started that like first official business where I consistently had to make the boards myself. I would wake up in the morning, make one of the molds, take the old mold, like uh, the old deck out of that mold, make another one, go to school, come back, take that mold out, put a new one in there, do my work, you know, what I would do on the day to day, uh, manage orders, make videos, and then come back and then, uh, or uh, before I go to sleep, take that one out of the mold. And it's just that consistent factor, that consistency, that discipline that I learned at a very early age right. is what I think really molded this now consistent factor that I have of like never, I never gave up in investing in the stock market. I never right. gave up in learning like how to buy like, you know, a, my first house at age 20 um, or how to invest in cars. Um, There's always obstacles that I encountered, but when I really like set my eye for something, that's something that I was like really told about myself at a very early age. I remember there's a counselor meeting where uh, we we're trying to decide like what university I wanted to go to and what my GPA had to be. My sister was in the room and the counselor said that, oh, Ricky, you have to work towards having this grade here. Uh, but there's no question that I know that you can do it. And my sister, but my sister saying it just really resonated very well with me that she was like, yeah, Ricky's a go-getter. And every time that he sets his mind to something, he just does it. And it's very easy for anyone to say that, but to hear it from my little sister, uh, to, to hear it from my sister, <laughs> That's Justin. I think he wants to race, right? Looks like he wants to race. You've never been in a McLaren, right? Never. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. I think we won that race. Right? <laughs> oh my god. This oh my is god. Like dad would take me to work every single morning even when I was in elementary school reminded me that if I don't want to do this type of hard manual labor for the rest of my life that I better do good in school or I better figure out something because he knew that I was again really good behind like a computer and stuff like that that I could do something so much more effective and efficient without having to do so much work with my hands. So he encouraged you to use your mind more so than your hands like, with your labor? I don't think there's a better way to yeah. Work, yeah. It, it seems like you had a lot of different businesses or like things you were doing when you were in your teens or like maybe even early 20s yeah. between the fingerboards and then after the fingerboards is that when you started trying out trading? Or was there something between well, it, that as far as it was? I, I was I was just trying to figure out like I knew I wanted a GTR and I was 
always just very active. I think as like very, like if anyone watching this video has started selling things at a very early age, I think it's very easy for them to like relate to just trying to figure out a market that you can excel in. So I was buying and selling stuff both in person and online because okay. there's a way to make money. Uh, I was trying to learn how to invest in the stock market. I got exposed to the stock market at age 14. So it was like an on and off, like I wasn't successful right away with it whatsoever. Uh, I knew that you could make money on it, but I was making much more money, like, you know, let's say making and selling my fingerboards or buying and selling cars or, you know, buying and selling stuff online. It wasn't to a point where I had enough capital sure. to actually like, you know, trade and, and not even just the capital, but to have the right like mindset and principles that I, it took a while for me to, you know, cause I was self-taught mm -hmm. to get to that point. This is Top Golf. Okay, cool. So this is the- we'll Check that out later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it took me a while to be able to like become confident again after like I experienced um, like my big loss when it came down to trading, but I always knew that you could make money doing it. It just was something that I had to continue to refine and learn from my mistakes. And at 14, it's very difficult to like make sense of that. So. Yeah. Um, as time went on and I matured, so did my investing style and so did the concepts that I implemented. Caleb's one of our partners within Flipping Roses. This is Ryan. Nice, nice to meet you, Ryan. Caleb. That's Ryan's channel. <laughs> hey, what's up, Ryan's <laughs> channel? <laughs> Why? Master room. So we have like the dual uh, rooms here: the shower, the bathroom. We have a walk-in closet that goes in all the way in there. We have another walk-in closet that goes in over there. But um, yeah, this is very cool. Pretty much it. Um, very simple, I think. Uh, we do some filming here, not really much. Um, but yeah, let's go upstairs. This is normally, although we do have like a little, like, little office section upstairs, this is really where we do a majority of our work. <laughs> so as you see, we just beat Ryan, right? But all right, let's continue the rest of the uh, tour. This is kind of our hangout area. So usually in the morning when I'm done trading and they finish like the first hour or two hours of work, uh, we go to lunch, maybe we take a little break and uh, ping pong is like a huge thing that we play at this house. It's just cool. like a little hobby that we have. You have the air hockey table. Um, again, we're still fully furnishing it. Uh, the house came with this like support beam. That's why we have that <laughs> there. But uh, we have a little bar area here. And um, this is our movie room. Uh, we're still getting um, the bigger TV set up. So right now we have a pretty much, uh, or we have a pretty small TV. It's a 65 inch right now. We have the uh, studio or stadium seating, um, movie seats. Two bean bags, super comfortable. If you lay down on those, you will fall asleep. <laughs> you should have a warning label on it. Over here, um, we have, oh, the guys are actually working here, but this is kind of like the tech buds office area. So not anything that we could really record. So I would say, Ricky, that you've really like achieved a level of success that a lot of people strive to. And especially at 23 years old, it's pretty incredible. What would you say are like a couple of like the most important lessons you've learned over basically seeing your dad and laying tiles with him and then starting your own fingerboard business and then starting off with trading and kind of like having to figure all that out yourself and then becoming a successful trader. What were like the most important lessons you've learned through the whole process? I, I think just, and I, it might sound like very cliche, but I have a huge passion for like every single market that I'm actually successful in. And it's because I wasn't so, I was already doing well. So like I was talking about, I was doing a bunch of different things. I was always doing like already better than the average person because of how much, how frugal I was, how much money I was saving, how much I was doing with my time. Sure. That when I was trying to explore these different markets, it wasn't a make it or break it for me. And it wasn't such an aggressive way to like, you know, I have to do this or if I fail, it's just back to reality, right? It was always like, I'm doing this at a rate because I'm extremely passionate about this market. I want to learn more about it. And because of that passion being like, initially what motivated me and not mm -hmm. the monetary aspect, the monetary aspect was definitely like the goal, but 
it's not what motivated me to get started. Sure. Right. And because of that, I just always was someone that was willing to learn new things. So when it came down to investing in real estate, when it came down to investing in the stock market, when it came down to, you know, investing in cars, it was always just something that I had a huge passion for and I was always willing to learn more about. I wasn't someone that was super aggressive about it. So I really think that knowing that it was going to take time and I was okay with that, that I progressively let my passion be what drive me and like be that drive on the consistent basis sure. to eventually lead to my overall success. So. Yeah, I think it's so important to like start with a passion with whatever it is you're doing. So that's super helpful, yep. definitely. Of course. All right, guys, well, that's gonna wrap up this house tour. Thanks for showing us around, Ricky. Definitely a cool place. Uh, we're gonna have two other videos coming out with Ricky on the channel in the next couple of days. So guys, make sure you stay tuned for those. And I also linked up Ricky's YouTube channel, his Facebook group and everything else down in the description below. So make sure you guys check that out. All right, but we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you, guys.